and it has a quick coupling. I finally got one. All right, so this right here is the opening mechanism for the tailgate on the Polaris. I've taken this apart a little bit, but this sits inside of here like that. And then you have your handle that you pull out in order to open the tailgate. Problem is that the handle itself has some damage and it's a bit difficult to open the tailgate right now because this needs to go well as you can see when you pull this there's sort of no action until you get to about here and from here all the way up to the top it starts pulling out the tabs the locking tabs on the tailgate so all of this is just play in the handle mechanism nothing happens for this entire travel here we'll make up for it hopefully by just welding another piece of metal onto this handle here. So I'll show you that in a second, but that's the plan. This is my Megatronic stick welder. Focus stick 161E PFC. It goes up to 160 amps and it's been a great welder for everything that I've needed stick for, especially welding outside or welding heavy duty material. It's slow and it's a bit more work. You gotta hammer off the slag and clean up your welds before you can continue. And obviously it is not great for thinner material. And for welding stuff inside the workshop where there's no wind, a MIG welder is a lot more convenient. It's a lot easier for me to use. I'm not great with the stick welder. Now, I do have a MIG welder that I'll probably put 50 kilos of thread through, and that is this cheap Stanley MIG welder. And this has honestly been great. I've used it, as I said, a lot. Now, this is a four post lift that you've seen me use quite a lot in my videos. I got it for free and it was in pretty bad shape when I got it. So me and my electrician friend, we welded all of these four corners here with the Stanley MIG welder. It's not a professional welder by any means, but if you don't do a lot of welding, then this thing is pretty nice. There's a few downsides to it. As you can see, the MIG hose package here is hardwired straight into the welder itself. So it's not easily interchangeable. It only does MIG and nothing else. And there's not too much adjustability on it. All you have are these high and low switches to adjust your amperage. One and three is one setting. 2 and 4 is one setting, 1 and 4, yeah, etc. And there was a knob here to control your wire feed speed. What happened was, was I had this welder propped up when I was welding something on the timber trailer, I think it was, and it fell over and it landed on its face, sort of. And this face here got pushed in, the knob here fell off, and there's a circuit board behind here. I tried to fix it, but I, I never managed to couldn't really figure out what was wrong. I'm pretty sure that the circuit board behind here is cracked. So yeah, this is the MIG welder that I probably mentioned in a few other videos that is broken. So I've been missing a MIG welder more times than I can count. And the various times that I've done some welding on this channel, you guys have asked why I don't have a MIG welder. Now, if I were to just have one welder on this farm, then I would have definitely picked a stick welder which is why I bought this when the other one broke. I got the money to buy this stick welder in a birthday present a few years ago, but I've still been missing the MIG welder a lot. But today I'm quite excited because I finally got one. This is an ESA Rogue ES180. It's a MIG welder that also does stick of course and TIG as well. If you know anything about this, the TIG feature is the kind where you have to scrape the material in order to get the TIG going. But might try it in the future. I didn't buy the hose package for that. So this is strictly MIG as it is. I think it came with a stick hose package or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it did. There it is. I haven't tried it yet. So let's see if we can get it set up and do this little welding job here. So apparently there's supposed to be some handles right here. I guess. I'm not sure if I agree with having these handles on here, but we'll see. You can always just take them off. And apparently you can make this tree phased. So I was a bit interested to see how you do that. Hmm. 
I think I need my electrician friend to have a look at this. I have to change this cable out. There's only two leads going from this. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'll, I'm going to put this back and I'm not going to dabble with this. On single phase 230 volts, I think it needs about 20 amps. That's going to be an issue. But it's going to be fine for like 95% of what I'm going to be using it for. So, And in the packaging, we get a MIG hose package, ground clamp, a stick hose package, user manual stuff, and a roll of 1 kilogram 0.8 mil welding wire. I also found a spool of wire inside the old MIG welder here. In addition to that, I bought a spool of another 0.8 mil. And to weld the thinnest material that this machine can do, I bought a spool of 1 kilogram 0.6 mil wire. I'm not sure about the gauge of the wire that was already in the old MIG welder, but we can figure that out. This is 0.9. So that's nice. Then we have 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and 0 0.9. If I remember correctly, 0.8 is what I used the most when I had the other MIG welder and apparently some 0.9 as well. I also bought a new mask. I've been quite happy with the old one here. It is from Castellin. I've changed the glass on this a few times. It's been a nice welding mask. I've been quite happy with it, but with this zip tie and the padding here starting to fall off, I kind of figured it was time for a new one. So I bought this, Savage A40. Some extra glass, that's nice. Two actually. And this is also an auto mask, just like the other one. So inside here, you can adjust the sensitivity and stuff. With the knob on the side, you can adjust how dark it should get. The only difference with this one is that you can change the battery for the auto feature. With this one, if the battery goes out, you'll just throw it in a bin. But that's a nice feature with this one. So let's go ahead and load it up with a spool here. See what size is pre-installed and it is 0.8. So let's just load up a 0.8 spool. We can start off by using the one kilogram spool that it came with. How do you open this? This seems to be a different type of wire here, a resto rod. The ones I usually buy are called auto rod. So I guess that's fine. I don't know. And this has a euro coupling, which is nice. Get this out first, I guess. And I assume that the wheel is on point eight. Yeah. And then we'll need some power. Now we should be able to feed this through from in here. Probably that one. Yep. And then we'll just feed until it comes out here. Battery ran out on the camera. I fed it through and the wire got hung up on this. I remember it used to do that on the old MIG welder as well. And I had to take this off and feed the wire through and then put this back on. We can put this on. There we go. All right, wires fed through. Now this, I don't really understand why you can adjust the pressure here. I guess it changes the pressure on the wire, but yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> I could read the user manual, but I'll trust that you'll leave a comment and tell me why you can adjust the pressure on that thing. And we'll need the grounding clamp, of course, but I'll have to check where this is supposed to be because you have negative there and plus there. You can swap this around depending on what you're going to weld. So let's see here. And we're using argon gas with 18% CO2. 
we're going to be welding ferrous material. We also noticed that the lead is supposed to go into the positive for all of these. So I guess if you're welding with the MIG, it goes into the positive. Hey, editing guy here. Actually, you'll use electrode positive for anything that requires shielding gas and electrode negative for flux cord wire. But anyway, for this application, the ground clamp goes into the negative. All right, now we need to connect some gas to this thing, which I have right here. This is called the Mison 18 or Mison or um, Mison. I don't know. Basically, it's argon and CO2. 18 stands for 18% CO2. And it has a quick coupling. Almost like a compressor fitting. And it seems like the welder also have a quick disconnect, which is nice. But then we'll need a quick coupling for this side as well, which we have right here. All right, there we go. That should be fine. And then we can connect this here. And then we'll turn this knob here to adjust the flow. I don't remember exactly how much I used to run it at, but see how far it goes. It goes all the way up to 30. Um, if I remember correctly, I used to run this uh, between 10 to 12. Might be completely off here, but let's leave it at 10. And then to open the valve, you just flip up this lever here. And to close the valve. And then I think we can test the gas in here. So this button here, if you push it downwards, you'll feed wire. And upwards, I assume that little icon there means gas. So if we press it upwards. All right, this should all be set up now. Obviously, it would be nice to have a welding crawly with the gas and the welder on so that I could move it around the workshop a bit easier, but I don't have that right now. Maybe in the not too distant future. Let me go ahead and clean this up and we can test a new welder. All right, got it propped up here. And I'll just tack weld it right along here. We'll try it at like 15.5 maybe. And then Y speed. 2.6 All right, that's not too bad. I don't think seems like we're in the ballpark here, but we can up the speed a little bit like 2.8 2.9 maybe 2.8 and maybe like 15.7 2.9 okay All right, well, I don't think that's terrible for the first time I've ever used this. It's definitely not coming off anyway, so I'm happy with that. I need to cut off probably two thirds of this steel that we welded on here. And we'll probably need to grind off the welds here a little bit for it to fit inside of this mechanism. Oh, and this welding mask, very nice. Night and day compared to this. And the locking mechanism for keeping it upright is also very sturdy. It's just tight enough to where you can do that. So yeah, very happy with this. I actually need to take a little bit more, but I I think I'll just grind it down because it's not much. All right, I think that's fine. Could have done a tiny bit more. As you can see, it sticks open, but doesn't really matter. Once you've used this for a bit, it'll grind itself down. Now the pin that goes through here needs to be heated up and squished so that it doesn't work itself back out. All right, 
I squished it and bent it a little bit. Some white grease here. I think it's mostly just Vaseline. I think that's good. I feel like something ain't right here. I took the entire assembly here out to see if there's any adjustability. There doesn't seem to be, but maybe this rod here is threaded into the pin and that way we could screw it further into the pin, making it a bit shorter. So we're going to take out that set screw and see what's inside. Ah, I see. So this is just loose on here and the set screw is what's keeping it in place. So it was previously right there, but we could make it shorter. So I'm going to take this one off as well and then hopefully we can adjust these to fit the locking mechanism better. I'm going to have to take the number plate off. All right, small issue. I can't access the set screw when this is installed. So we're just gonna have to do it by eye. I'll just look at where it was previously. So there's the mark of the set screw. I will just go a little bit further than that. And then we'll do the same for the other one. Ah, set screw has to go <laughs> on the ins. Set screw has to go here, otherwise this won't contract. That's going to be perfect. All right, let's do this one. Let me clean this up a little bit. Yeah. Now for the opening mechanism. That works perfectly. And then there's some washes that go on top of here. With a clip through the pin. And we'll put the plate back on. That screw was missing from before. All right, I think that's pretty good. Leave a comment, tell me what you think. Subscribe if you want to see the next one. I'll see you then.